All right, Shalom, first and foremost, giving all praise to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachach, with Dash, with the Spirit to do this lesson. Double honor to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Shalom to the men of the Lord, prophesying, preaching, and teaching on the highways and byways in sincerity and in truth. Shalom, Barakatham. Uh, it's your brother Yura. I'm coming back at you to. Uh, I'm going to go into this. Uh, these wars that are continuing to go on that continue to prove uh prophecy on who the true people of the of the lord are who are the israelites which are so-called negroes latinos and native americans and the rest of the scattered sheep uh, what brothers will call a lot of times confusion or face which basically just means you look like other nations but your father your patrilineal descent all right it is it's of jacob okay And, and despite the way you look, you're an, you're an Israelite, and we know these things by the fruits uh, of their spirit. All right, that's how we judge is through the spirit. So you guys can't get caught up on, uh, you know, guys looking like they're looking like particular different nations if they're sincere, and they repent. All right, and they're and they're vibing with the Holy Spirit, and there's a very good chance that they're an Israelite. You know, and you want to treat them like a brother until they prove that they're not. Because there are niggas that Israel who know that they're Israelites, we know are Israelites that are just niggas, you know, that, that betray the ministry, that go back into the world despite having the truth. All right. And so you got you can't get caught up on that. But then there's this other group of people who we can't even say their names because we know that's how we know they're in rulership. The JEWs or the 1948ers who have a claim to be who have made this this bold claim that they are those people and what's being proved out now when you read i'm gonna play a little bit of this this video uh try to keep this short prophecy it's proving that prophecy is not on their side okay now there's guys who try to say that you know when the, the time of the gentiles and the, uh, the uh israel should be trodden down under the uh by foot until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, they're trying to say that those are Palestinians. And that's not true. The real Gentiles that it's talking about are you, are both of you really in the land. Both of you are Gentiles, according to that scripture. All right. As a matter of fact, let me, uh, let me go to that. Okay. This is uh, Luke 21 and 24 It says and they shall fall by the edge of the sword And shall be led Away captive into all nations And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles Until the time of the Gentiles Be fulfilled that's Luke 21 and 24 Alright so they'll try to say that those Are the Palestinians and that when they came Back into the land you know They, they basically Fulfilled prophecy and, and the fact that they were able to take down all those Other nations in 1967 that try to that try to root them out. They're saying that that's proof that the Most High was with them. But see, that doesn't that doesn't play out because the scriptures speak about that war. We get into the land being much more massive, and and there being all types of nations coming around. All right, including Russia, including Gog and Magog. All right, uh, uh, when you read Ezekiel thirty eight. It speaks about uh, the people in Turkey as well. 38 and 5, it says Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them handling, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and his bands, all right, that's over there in, in the Greece area, all right. Eastern Europe and all his bands, and the house of Togermot of the North Quarters and all his bands, all right. So it's more than just the Middle East. That would, that would gather it's, it's going to be a world war And that's not what happened in 1967 And they'll try to make Make it seem like that's what happened That that's how They can prove that they were into the land But really they're, they're just Edomites Okay And they stole the land Just like they stole every other uh, Land Outside of the, the The original land of uh Of Edom Okay Let's play a little bit of this See what's going on Yes sir Yes sir 
Well, tonight the fighting in the Middle East has taken an ominous turn. Israeli ground forces have now entered Gaza. That's a major escalation. Can you just paint us a picture of how dire the situation is right now? This is what we know so far. There are currently no IDF ground troops inside the Gaza Strip. The IDF air and ground forces are carrying out strikes on targets in the Gaza Strip. So, despite reports, we can tell you this morning that there is no ground offensive from Israel into Gaza so far. It's just gone at 2 a.m. in Jerusalem. Okay, so why are they invading, okay? What did the scriptures say about when the true Israelites were coming to the land? And the brothers brought that out um, on camp on Saturday, basically. You know? Let me get uh, Isaiah 60. Brothers brought this out. Isaiah 60 and 18. All right, and this is speaking of when we get when we get uh, deliverance when Yahweh Shai returns, and we get brought back into our land. Uh, Isaiah sixteen and eighteen it says, "Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise." All right, what do you see here? <laughs> you see explosions, rockets, people marching in, ground troops. Look at this. Israeli Arabs and also um, Israeli Jews together. I mean, there's the four quarters. I mean, it's a mm. special, special place. Mm. And to have them warring on the streets like that in the gang warfare is. But I want to say last time that the the violence escalated and it was nothing like this. It was very, mm. it was very, very different. different. It was rockets and all, but we weren't seeing these. So if there's so much violence, why don't y'all fit this prophecy, where it says, "Violence shall no more be heard in thy land." All right. Because y'all don't fit it, man. Y'all aren't it. All right. <laughs> and there wasn't going to be no question about this. You know, y'all been doing it since since 1948. Y'all have been warring, trying to keep the peace in that land, trying to trying to conquer that land. All right. And you haven't been able to just exterminate them without being put on blast on the world stage. So you look crazy. But over time, y'all been trying to slowly take uh, <laughs> different bits of the land. Now, when you uh, look at Israel map, yeah, Israel map 1948 <laughs> to 2021. Let's see if I can get images of it. Here it is right here. All right. <laughs> now you see over time, they've slowly been progressively trying to take over that land, okay? So this, this has been an act of them trying to do it as men, which proves that that's not scriptural. And I'll get, how is the Most High supposed to deliver us and bring us into that land? Let me get Ezekiel 20 real quick. Cause this is madness, man. Y'all don't fit any of these pro prophecies, man. It's ridiculous. You can even make the claim. This is uh, Ezekiel 20 and 34. It says, And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So the Most High is going to do it with the, with the stretched out arm and the mighty hand. And what does that mean? That means it's going to be on a, on a much bigger level than even the, the Exodus. When the Most High brought plagues on Egypt, you know, we had a giant chariot, which y'all call UFO, basically escorting us out in the wilderness. 
had all those other nations shook, terrified, man. All right, every it was known to everybody who we were when we left Egypt. The Canaanites knew about us before we even showed up. The Edomites tried to cut us off when we tried to make passage into the land. They wouldn't let us through. They they, they all knew what happened in Egypt. All right, it was it wasn't this, you know. I'm gonna sign this little document, <laughs> you know, amongst us, and then we gonna install a colony of you and then slowly over time we're going to fund you and fund your military to take out the people that live there no man this is going to be uh undeniable when we get brought into the land it's going to be a spectacle and it's going to happen all at once all right let me read that again like you could 20 20 and 34 it says and i will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out all right, and the Most High didn't gather anybody out of Europe, okay, to come into the land. As a matter of fact, y'all were having to pay people to come there. All right, a lot of them wanted to stay in Europe, and that's part of the reason why what happened happened in World War II. You had what you call Zionists, they wanted to go back into the land. And the ones that didn't want to go back into the land, you know what happened to them? They they gave they gave you up to that to you know. What's what's the guy's name? His uh, original name? I don't want to say his name on uh, on YouTube, but the mustache guy. I'll just I'll just say that. That's what happened to you non-Zionists that didn't want to go back to the state. They basically started just exterminating y'all. And the ones who were with it, they went back into the land, and slowly over time, they they just started wiping y'all out. That's not prophecy, okay? This is uh, verse 35, and it says, And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. All right, when did that happen? When did y'all go into the wilderness and the, and the Most High pleaded with you? It says, Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. All right, so what's happening here in prophecy is going to be very symbolic of what happened in Egypt. It's going to be supernatural. It's going to be undeniable to the heathen who the true people of the Lord are. You're not going to be questioning the people ain't going to be uh, uh, doubting your history because they're going to see eyewitness, <laughs> you know, of, of what's going on. All right. That that reminds me of. Uh, wisdom of Solomon five. Because there's there's not gonna be any doubt, man. This is Solomon five and one. It says, "Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labors." And that's us. That never happened to y'all. Y'all have always been uh, super rich. Okay, you you've never worked the fields. Okay, and had your labor exploited. All right, and they're still being exploited to this day. It says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. All right, there was no strangeness to y'all, quote unquote, proclaimed salvation. All right, and y'all don't even believe in the Messiah who's going to, that's the hand of who, how this is going to happen. The Messiah is going to come back and, 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 and lead this. Okay. It says so far beyond all that they look for. All right. So that proves when we get brought into the wilderness, man, it's going to be the all the nations going to be like, damn, <laughs> you know, there ain't going to be no doubt in anybody's mind. There ain't going to be no some heathen in the land trying to lay claim. There ain't going to be no residual Palestinians <laughs> still trying to No, man. Everyone's going to bow. They're going to have to. OK. Verse 35 again, uh, Ezekiel 20, 20 and 35. Again, it says, and I will bring you into the wilderness with the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord Jehovah Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, verse 37, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. All right. Now, what covenant did y'all get brought into when you got something called Pink City, man? What covenant is that? 
after you get brought into the land, you're supposed to pass under the rod and bring brought into the bond of the covenant. <laughs> Look, no, nah, that's not it. Tel Aviv, really. Look, over 250,000 revelers flood Tel Aviv for Israel's biggest ever gay pride parade. Is that is that the men of the Lord? Is that the people of the Lord? All right. After they got. After it says, and I will cause you to pass under the rod and will bring you into the bond of the covenant. It says, and I will purge out from among you the rebels. All right. And them that transgress against me. So how the hell is that you? This never happened to you. Okay. It says, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord Jehovah. So it said, niggas that would be about stuff like this would not enter into the land. And that's really going to you two thirds. Y'all are going to be put to death. If not in these plagues, if not by missiles, then the Most High is going to bring you out into the wilderness and <coughs> Salakia. And basically put you to death. Okay? For being niggers, rightfully so. You know? It says, verse 39 As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Jehovah Bashimi Hawashai, go ye serve ye every one his idols. And hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. It says, For in my holy mountain, the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord Jehovah. There shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and I will require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. <clears throat> I will accept your sweet, I will accept you with your sweet savor, and will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will be and, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. Alright, this isn't being sanctified, and this isn't the most high. Coming back and dealing with us again, accepting our sacrifice. All right. This this is this is utterly madness. But you know what? What else it proves is that y'all although y'all are actually the Amalekites, okay? Let me get a uh, because this is just going into this is this is basically y'all leading everybody into World War Three, man. These ground attacks and assaults. Yeah, it feels like the same movie, but just slightly different. Tonight, Israeli tanks and armored personnel carriers headed for the border with Gaza as Israeli military officials say they have begun a ground assault into the Palestinian enclave. Despite reports, we can tell you this morning that there is no ground offensive from Israel into Gaza so far. It's just gone at 2 a.m. in Jerusalem. We'll get as much up to And see, they're trying to play it carefully. They want, they want the world and the media to be on their side. Which it already is, but they want to convince the masses. See, they don't want—they don't want to break the spell, the enchantment that they have on you. If they were to pop off too quickly, too soon, and get too violent too quickly, a lot of people will wake up. <laughs> All right, and just like this, uh, this past Saturday, at that camp, you saw more people—more people I've ever seen—backing uh, up the Palestinians about what's happening. So people are actually starting to wake up and starting to see. Things of what they really are, you know. But the scriptures say this that this would happen, and y'all are gonna provoke World War Three because Iran is invested into that group over there uh, in the Gaza, 
the terrorist group or whatever they call them. All right, they're invested in them, and Russia's invested in Iran, and China's invested in Russia. <laughs> All right, and, and they're also invested in Syria. So this is this is the big proxy war, and Israel is is, is basically, or those those nineteen forty eighters are basically revving everything up, man. Let me see, just the uh, it says the least of the flock. At the bottom of one of these. Maybe it's Jeremiah 51. Slakia. It's someone that I probably overlooked it. I was earlier on uh, <clears throat> Jeremiah 50 and 45 Salakia, Salakia Yeah, I was there It says uh, Jeremiah 15 and 45 It says, therefore Hear ye the counsel of the Lord Jehovah that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. So this shows you that they're linked to Babylon. And who's giving them uh, another, 38, another $38 billion over the next 10 years, man? It's America. All right. It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely shall he make their habitation desolate with them. Okay. So he gonna, he's going to. He's that little nigga that's going that's starting to fight at, at, with with the big nigga at the bar, <laughs> you know, he's talking shit, and he's gonna get all y'all knocked out. That's that's what that's what's going on here. All right, it's just at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. What is that talking about? When Babylon gets taken and the earth is moved, that's talking about thermonuclear destruction. Okay, it says and the cry is heard among the nations, and we read. You can read all about that in revelation okay revelation the 18th chapter all right 16th chapter really all throughout all right isaiah 34 all right this place is through man so with that hopefully our brothers were edified call hello yahweh by shimmy yahweh shai by hashem rachakwadash wa about ball shalom